Lives of Our Saints, our church celebrates the feast day of Saint Zacharias. The following are some details on his life and works. Zacharias served God in the temple in Jerusalem. Together with his wife Elizabeth, he led a life of piety. They had no children and accepted their childlessness as God's will. Their situation changed, however, when God sent the archangel Gabriel to Zacharias to tell him that his wife Elizabeth would bear him a son whom he should call John. Because his wife had exceeded the age of childbearing, Zacharias asked that a sign be given. Although Gabriel assured Zacharias that he would indeed become a father, Zacharias still still did not believe. Consequently, he was rendered mute as a sign. His speech would not be restored until the Lord so deemed. At the exact moment of the birth of his son John, when Zacharias was unable to speak, he could but weep for joy. John was born a few months before Jesus and was similarly an intended victim of King Herod's decree that all children under the age of two should be put to death. By this decree, King Herod hoped to assure the death of the newborn saviour among the slain infants. When the Holy Family fled to Egypt, Elizabeth took her precious baby to the hills outside of Jerusalem. Zacharias remained behind to face the wrath of Herod, who had been told that this most holy man was the father of a son who had been spirited out of Jerusalem. He tried to appease Herod's wrath to no avail, and was told that if he revealed the whereabouts of his son, he would not be punished. This ludicrous proposition was scornfully spurned, and in due course the harsh justice was meted out, and the kindly Zacharias was put to death. With no next of kin to claim the martyred father, the record of his interment was lost. For centuries he lay in obscurity in an unmarked grave. However, in 409 AD, during the reign of Emperor Theodosius, a man named Galimenos, about whom nothing is known except for his name, fortuitously discovered the burial site of St. John's father. The remains of Zacharias, clad with white vestments, with a gold mitre on his head, and on his feet the golden sandals he had worn in the temple, were uncovered on the 11th of February 409. Each year on this day, our church observes the feast day of St. Zacharias. However, being the father of St. John the Baptist is not sufficient in itself to qualify a man for sainthood, but in the case of Zacharias, there are too many other considerations to be made that indicate otherwise. In the first place, although exact details of his early life remain obscured, Zacharias, a deeply religious as well as courageous man, must have spoken to God through the archangel Gabriel. His voicelessness added to his moral strength through God when his son John was born. With his voice regained, he could have spoken up when summoned before Herod, but he may well have just been voiceless again. God had restored his voice, but he refused to use it. In choosing to remain silent as to his son's whereabouts, he chose to give his own life so that John might live and become the prefiguration of Jesus Christ. Because he had the power of God within him to sustain him throughout his ordeal with King Herod, whose name lives in infamy, Zacharias must have shown a composure and serenity that just had to confound those who would destroy him. King Herod was in a state of bewilderment as well as anger, but God knew what he was doing when he chose Zacharias, and we revere him today as a choice of a good saint.